So what's going on guys, DIY Dan, Saltwater Junkie again, and this is part of a series I'm doing on what materials and how I build certain uh, parts of my systems. And this video in particular is gonna be about my water level switches that I use and the converters that I run my DC pumps and relays with. So let's check it out. All right guys, so the first thing we'll talk about is these level switches. And if you're ever going to be doing any wiring with level switches, converters, whatnot, uh, you need to have a multimeter. Go to Harbor Freight, they're less than 10 bucks. If you don't have one, uh, you got to have one to be doing this kind of stuff, all right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put it on ohms. And the ohms is that one right there, okay? And how we check it, make sure we're getting what we need, okay? We got an open, that one means we're at an open right now. Hook them together, now we got 0.0, .0 right? So we got a good solid connection there, electricity is flowing. So, open circuit, meaning it's not flowing electricity. Closed circuit, meaning it is flowing electricity, all right? We're gonna hook it up to each wire on the level switch. All right, now I'm gonna show you it sideways, obviously this would be either like this or like this, but just to show you, I'm gonna do it sideways so you can see it better. So right now, depending on which way you'd mount this, this would be an open circuit, right? Closed circuit, okay? So if that's not what you need it to be, all you gotta do is take that clip off, flip this around. Now you've got a open circuit, closed circuit. Okay, so that's how easy these are to flip around, make them do what you want to do. So if you got this in a bracket this way and you want it to have a closed circuit in the down position and an open circuit in the up position, all you got to do is flip it over. Now you have a closed circuit in the down and an open circuit in the up. And the same thing if you flip the whole sensor around, all right? So that's how easy these switches are to make them do what you want them to do. All right guys, so this is just kind of a quick view of the relays I use. And I'm gonna show you the power source that I'm using to power them. <clears throat> and on this system, this is my 125 reef. You can see that. I've actually got a nine volt converter, but it's a four amp converter. So I'm actually using that one converter, and I don't remember where I got that from. Uh, but it's running all three of these relays, okay? This is my protein skimmer shutdown. Now this one, the converter is only used, being used to excite the relay if need be, because this is running my protein skimmer. And so this is a 110 extension cord that's plugged into the contact side of this relay. And the converter is only exciting the relay if necessary. The converter is also exciting this relay but it is also powering the little DC water pump that is running my auto top off, okay? So I'm using the same converter to excite the relay and run the pump. And then this one is actually a circulation pump that is uh, circulating the storage container of my ATO. And again, I'm using a 110 pump, so this is an extension cord that is running on the on the contact side and the converter is only being used to excite this relay. All right? All right guys, so now we'll talk about the converters that I use and I'm running like three or four of these converters and I've only paid for one on my systems. The reason being is a lot of your small appliances around the house will be powered by a converter. So when the appliance goes bad, if you ever have one of these box style plugins, that's a converter. You can check the voltage on it, see what it's putting out. They also say it on it. For example, this one is 12 volts DC, 1500 milliamps. This one right here, um, I would feel comfortable running a 12 volt relay and a uh, 12 or a little DC water pump like this for an auto top off without a problem. I actually had this one. This one's you can't really see this one, but this one's nine volt, 350 milliamp. I did have this one running a little DC water pump and a relay, but I found one with some more milliamps to it 
and I didn't want to overheat this one trying to run the pump. Um, so I ended up upgrading to a little bigger, bigger converter. But this 350 milliamps would trigger just a relay without a problem, all right? Your exciter for your relay is gonna take less than 100 milliamps, all right? So um, no problem with running just a relay uh, for like a protein skimmer shutdown with this, a converter this size. Now, this is a good example of one. My dogs ate through this cord. Wife got all freaked out, went and bought another one. So I checked it. The converter is still good. I'm gonna show you how to check it. All right, we're gonna take our leads. I'm on DC volts on my multimeter. We're gonna take our leads. It's plugged in right now. We're gonna hook them to the wires. Okay. Like so. Now all multimeters have a red and a black cable, yes? This is positive, this is negative. Reason for this is, notice how I'm reading a negative 15 volts right now? And don't worry about that 15 volts. As soon as you put a load to it, like a pump, it's gonna drop, or probably even the relay exciter, what's gonna drop down below 12 volts, all right? So I'm gonna flip these, because I was reading a negative voltage. Okay, now I'm reading a positive voltage. No negative in front of it. So that means this is our ground or our negative. This is our positive, okay? And that's very critical because when you're wiring stuff in, you have to know what's positive and what's negative, all right? Especially when you're dealing with diodes. Uh, some of the relays have diodes in them and electricity can only flow one way. So it's very critical you know what's what when you're wiring stuff in. So hopefully you guys got some good information out of that and hope to see you on the next clip guys. Have a good one.